Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, are you enjoying the Wrestling Mayhem Show? Are you finding value in these conversations? Do you want to support it so we can become even bigger? Check out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's Sorg at Sorgatron here in the Mayhem Studios, the beautiful Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, ready to rock your face with wrestling talk. Yes. Here are my fellow rockers, uh, Marty Janetti, Papa Lunchbox. Just a goddamn second. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just compare me to Marty Janetti? It's the first name that I thought of. Sorg, you know. and, and Marty was my favorite. I, also, I'm I super am, interested. I'm super interested to hear who the other two rockers are. I, <laughs> um, I can think of one more. Other rock- I can I, think of two I more. I am completely adverse to most drugs. Okay. And going through windows of barber shops. Okay. Sorg. Okay. That's a pop lunchbox at DJ Lunchbox on the Twitters. Come also on, the Sean. Panel right. Also the Sean Michaels of the group, Mad Mike from Poughkeepsie, New York. Yeah. Woo! Oh, I'm going to throw LB through window. Actually, I should probably be the Mario Gennetti of the group, considering I think I'm the only one here who has actually been thrown through a window. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, also with uh, us, the little-known rocker, the uh, Bob Marty of the group, Eamon, at Eamon to please on the Twitters. Wait, wait, hold on, hold you on. Make you, no. Sorg, I don't know what the fuck Sorg, you're doing. Sorg. Sorg. Sorg is the Sean Michaels. What? Leaf Cassidy. Sorg is the Sean Michaels. Someone's the Marty Janetti. There's an Al fucking Snow. Oh. Remember when Al Snow was it, brother? That's right. Leaf Cassidy. Can I not be Leaf Cassidy? (laughs) (laughs) You are definitely a Leaf Cassidy now. Nobody wants to be Leaf Cassidy. (laughs) Leaf Cassidy appeared in the in the 90s, and so did you. Mm. Very true. Out of nowhere, like Randy Orton's finishing move. Bam! Bam! Amen! Bam! Amen on the floor. I don't know. I don't know. I I I I have interesting singlet attire now. What? I, I guess. <laughs> this, this show. Weekend. This sh- we are not e- five minutes in, and this show is completely stalled. No, I see it. Leave <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Hey guys, it's a wrestling man show. Either way, we do talk about professional what wrestling are eventually. You, uh, no, we're not. I, I'm the host, so I don't get to pick one. That's okay because I get to introduce that. Uh, hey, check out the intro music, basicsickness.com. He's got free music and more over there. Please support the guys that support us here from the Pittsburgh area. You can also uh, check us out. We are at wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all your posts and your shows, whatever after shows we end up doing this week because we're not too sure what the schedule changes. Um, you can also check out all this stuff on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, and iHeartRadio all over the place or was or wait, or, wait is this one on iHeartRadio the other one's not I can't I don't even know anymore I, I thought it was this one I don't remember if you, um, if you look for us on iHeartRadio and we're not on there you'll probably find the other show you will find the Indie more. Mayhem show on there if I'm mistaken in that I never know until Wednesday morning when I post them and I gotta remember oh that one's there okay I need an intern. Anyways, um, you can also please uh, share us, like us, subscribe to us on any of those platforms. Leave reviews. That helps more people find us if you're digging what we're doing. Um, you can also drop us a line. We're Good at times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. I was going to go with the social media first, but okay. 412-206-WMS0. We heard about a, from a lot of you guys in your post-SummerSlam hangovers on Sunday night, so we'll be getting to those later in the show. Uh, but you can also uh, hit us up at Mayhem Show on the Twitters, uh, and Wrestling Mayhem Show on the Facebook, on the Google+, and the very awesome Facebook group for Wrestling Mayhem Show, where a lot of conversation and picture sharing goes on. So please get involved with that. So, And also, big shout-outs to our Patreons. You heard about it at the top of the show. 
But uh, those that do think they find value or entertained or just love what we're doing here with the Wrestling Wrestling Mayhem Show, we appreciate all you guys listening, and especially these guys that step up to the plate and help us out a little bit financially, but you're just asking for a dollar a show and you get the extra Wrestling Mayhem Show gold. Uh, guys like uh, the refs, the WrestlingRevolution.com, go check them out over there. Great board, uh, great wrestling discussions happening there. And also our good friend from the show, Bo Diggity. Woo! Woo! who does that just so we do that at the beginning of the show so with that let's start the only way we know how as we are buried in the fan mail this week holy crap um where do we start uh i'll i'll, I'll do this first one wait there's no name on this first one tony oh wait no yeah. i know this, this is actually a response to last year's remember when um tony beard no, last year's remember when last last yes. week's remember when we were talking about hulk hogan um he says uh hey guys love hearing your show just started listening to you guys after the money in the bank pay-per-view and i've listened to you guys every week since thank you very much for that yeah, uh my awesome. my favorite hogan memory is back in 1999 on nitro when it was hogan sting and goldberg versus nash steiner and sid vicious Hogan came out in the red and yellow for the first time in years, and the place exploded. I freaked out about it. Granted, I was like 10 or 12 years old at the time, so I really only saw the NWO Hogan. Only time I saw the red and yellow Hogan was uh, old videos my grandpa had of him. What were your thoughts on this? You know what? I remember that, and I was probably about 18 at the time, and I also... Uh, probably screamed, screamed like an eight-year-old uh, because I remember the the uh, I don't know if you remember this, Missy, uh, but like they there was like like you know you got to do something because of whatever was going on and somebody like like I think like his son had like the red and yellow outfit or something like like and and gave it to him in the back and that's what turned him and it came out later in the show so that was really cool. Too bad less people were watching that by then. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, th I think I had already given up Nitro at that point. Because at the time he was like, I remember because I wasn't watching Nitro at the time. I, I had flipped over to WWF by that, and um, and I think I I'm like, why is there an NWO tie dye shirt that he's wearing? Um, and I think he switched from that over at the time, if I'm recalling correctly, it was, it was a while ago. So, but no, thank you very much for, for, uh, uh, hitting us up and following up on the remember when anytime you guys, you know, please email us or, or tweet us or Facebook us. If you have any additional remember ones that we didn't get to, uh, week to week, just please, please hit that up. Um, LB, I think you should read this next one. It is addressed to me. It is addressed to you. So, uh. It starts out, LB, I blame you for this. You can't give a person with OCD a video game where they have the opportunity to excel at things. Have you not noticed that my Candy Crush levels are all three stars? Uh, I, don't, I don't think Candy Crush. Uh, there's a little voice in the back of my head that says, come on, you can get that third star. You know you're not really beating the game if you don't have the third star. And now there's WWE Supercard. Not only do I have the standard beating other people and upping my win streak option. And there's a picture uh, and she's got uh, RVD, it's her champion and uh, 297 wins and 53 losses. This is since Saturday night at the beginning of an indie show. Right. You see that 297 wins and 53 losses, 297 wins guys. That's I also pretty. have the Pokemon Got to catch them all fever where I want to unlock all of the things. And then there's the catalog listing how many common, uncommon, rare, 79, rare, ultra rare, epic, legendary, and support cards. You have 65 of the uncommons? There are 58 legendary cards. That's 58 legends, guys. I must have them. All of them. But that's not all, folks. No, that's not all. There's a King of the Ring option where you're pitted against other game players in a two-day battle to the top. In a general state of curiosity, I went ahead with a King of the Ring bout. And I won, guys! And there's a picture of RVD in the champion's <laughs> bracket that says Rebellious Flaw. I have succeeded with the King of the Ring. And, to be honest, I have no interest in going through that hassle again. It ties up my cards for two days. And I have to earn energy credits to keep my superstars charged to succeed. Besides, I won the first time I tried it. Why would I need to do what it again? <laughs> Legit. If I hadn't won, I would be in the middle of the King of the another King of the Ring bout right now, despite the hassle. I have to run. Typing this email is cutting my playing time. Wife of the show, 
Misfits. And she Missy, is... A.K.A. Mrs. Sword, who is in the studio! Yes, yes, right across from me, and she's been playing all night long. No, no, no. No, no? no I actually did some work. You did some work? I did some work. Okay. And... Then I went to the crack. Oh, good. She got her work done first. At least, <laughs> at least she's able. Priorities. There you go. I'm sure she did the same thing in school. That's why she had such great grades. So, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, th- this, 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 guys, the WWE Supercard game. We, we, we're all addicted to this now, right? Amen. Are you no, in this? No, no, Sorg. I'm not addicted to it at all. No, not at all. I'm not addicted to it. I was not playing while you were reading that because it reminded me that I need to play Supercard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love how the uh, Raw Hangout degenerated into everybody just playing Supercard on the Hangout. Yeah, and everyone and talking who about was fighting like, who. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, Zack Ryder got a lot of wins last night on the Raw Hangout. <laughs> <laughs> Zack Ryder and Eva Marie, they were they were the stars of last night's Raw. Wow, wow. <laughs> um. Eamon, are you have you been getting in this? You're the only one we haven't really touched base with since this I, thing came out. No, I have been. Uh, I, I started getting it, I guess, when it came out. Um, I've been enjoying it. I, I'm with Missy. I don't enjoy. I, I'm, I'm not into the King of the Ring mode where you have to like like she mentioned recharge and and do stuff like that. But the, the exhibition mode and 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 the collectible aspect, I think, is really good. I really ask. This is honestly the first time in a good while that I've ever played one of these kind of games and. I'm enjoying it. It's 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 some fun stuff, I think. Here's the other question, and I know this goes out to the chat room. Has anybody spent money on this game yet? I have not. Absolutely not. But yeah, thankfully, I I, and honestly, until you mentioned it, I didn't know you could. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They don't they don't put it in your face. I wonder if that'll that'll probably change in future updates to the game. Mm-hmm. I bet. Um, or when you like are getting to this weird point where you haven't gotten like the next up card to really upgrade things, Missy's raising her hand right now. I better not see that on the bank statement. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm super happy because I just unlocked the rock. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh jeez. Um, anyways, uh, but no, it, it seems like it does step you through. Unlike tapped out, will. Um, oh my god, tapped out. It does it does step you through so you're not really desiring to spend money, but if you really want to you can. And and I, you know, at this point like enough people will just go spend the money that they're mm. they'll be doing okay with this game, right? I just want them to add trading. If they add trading to it, that I would, would be good. Really or really, like yeah. a, or a specific where you can actually match up against your friends. Yeah, 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 that's the thing. Is everything's kind of an offline mode here. Uh, for those that haven't played the game, like there's an exhibition where you'll get they'll give you like four choices, and you'll just see the records and the username, pretty much randomly, right? But you're mm-hmm. not actually yeah, playing so. them. It automatically pulls cards mm-hmm. on the other side, like the computer does it to just use different people's decks. Yeah, and when you beat those people, it doesn't count as on their lost records. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I wish I could change my username because I accidentally hit enter when I like goofed something for some reason, <laughs> and now I'm S O capital R H. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I would love to change that, please. Um, yeah, but if they please. ever if they ever make an option where you can challenge your friends, uh, we should all get on a Google Hangout, <laughs> have a big rumble, and and just live blog it. I feel like that. I feel like that would be a lot of fun. Could be, but maybe only for us. I don't know if that's a spectator <laughs> yeah, sport. Probably at only that for point. us. Good way to do time. Yeah, yeah. Well, that. but either way, the game has made Monday Night Raw three hours very bearable. Bearable. Yes. Um, not that it was a bad show last night. I was uh, going to say last night was a pretty good, damn good show. But there's still points where like everybody's like, yeah, I'm going to play this instead. Yeah. So, um, but no, it was it, it's pretty good. Uh, they got hit. This is t- 2K already right off the bat. You know, has something like this that we're like, yes. You know, and and this is like WWE Network. Everybody I know is playing it at this point. Um, the thread. When I think LB, did you start that the thread of like, so what's everybody yeah, doing with it was, Supercard? It was like the first couple of days after the the game came out, and I knew that everybody was already hip deep in it. So um, I I started a thread on Facebook. I was like, who is your team? What's your lineup? And how much are you playing? <laughs> And and people kept just updating it as they went. I'm trying to find where it started here. 
Um, and, and everybody just like screen capped their lineup too. Mm-hmm. So, oh wait, we got an update from the couch. This is exactly why I blame LB because I saw that post and I was <laughs> like, crap, I now have to do this. Now I've not actually posted anything in the thread because I've been too busy playing the game. Doc Remedy, who won as Big John Stud, the King of the Ring, uh, or at least the contenders bracket, uh, just says, I have a problem. <laughs> so this is not only a friend game kind of thing, but it's also kind of a support group. Uh, so it's also fun because we are like kind of saying our experiences. Like I've been riding this diesel, this, uh, this, uh, uh, not what was it, three up or whatever diesel uh, since the beginning. Right. And I'm seeing the lineups that everybody else has because um, it, 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 it is a different experience for everybody. And it, it's pretty cool that way. So this is making me a bigger fan of our truth. And I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I've had the Titus O'Neill for the longest time. I really want to get rid of this. is like My really super rare our truth like dominates people. I, I- I feel so bad. I was at odds <laughs> when uh, I had to get rid of the uncommon Bo Dallas because I just needed to lo- get a big, a b- better set guy out there. <laughs> so, anyway, Sorg, Sorg, you can you can win with that lineup. You just have to Bo leave. Indeed. No, Indeed. no, no, no. Just let it be quiet for a minute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. But uh, no, tell us your WWE Super Card experiences. Are you addicted? Are you having fun? Or do you just hate the experience all around? <laughs> are you getting way, way, way too many Virgils like fun. I am? Uh, let us know on the Twitters, on the Facebook, on the Google Plus, or in the chat room, of course. Um, uh, I see they've been having some fun in there. Um, anyways, from there, we do have some more stuff. We have another m- email. This one by Matt Carlins. I'll take this one, guys. Unless, Eamon, do you want to pick this up? I, I, I can do it. All right. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. You did one. You, you're, you're good. Greetings. Greetings. I'm taking a break from shadow boxing topless in the desert to send you this email. Okay. <laughs> it's true. Uh, all right. What an incredible SummerSlam. Raw wasn't too bad either, thanks to the main event. I've come to realize that Ambrose Rollins' matches caused me to stream nonsense at my TV. Yes, their matches are that good. Dean's character is so bizarre and chaotic that I no longer question any of the absurd things that happen around him. I didn't even ask why there was a pile of cinder blocks sitting at ringside. I just assumed Kane can do magic and make anything appear out of underneath a black sheet. (laughs) Two questions. One, who will take the title from Brock Lesnar? Two, who should take the title from Brock Lesnar? Hmm. Hmm. Not uh, John I'll, Cena, right? I'll continue with the email, and we'll go back to the question. Okay. Um, I read Brandon Shroud's article where he theorizes that a reluctantly reunited Shield could be the only force strong enough to dethrone Brock. I think that would be brilliant. I think it should be Seth Rollins cashing in the money in the bank after an epic Shield beatdown. Probably just before the Rumble, so you can get Ambrose and Roman right into the hunt for the title. Plus, you can get plenty of time to start setting up a Rock Lesnar match at WrestleMania. That said, I think John Cena will take the title back, but hopefully we get a long run of Brock as a terrifying, dominant, sweaty champ before that happens. Have a great show. Your big homie in the mainstream media, Matt Carlin's P.S. Thanks for thanks for plugging my interview last week with Kurt Angle. You can watch the entire 20-plus minute video on KDKA.com. Your support shows that there is demand for mainstream media wrestling coverage. Nice. Yeah. That's true. So, so to the questions... Willem should, who should beat Brock Lesnar? As far as should, I'm going to say Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's what he should do. He should come back, beat Brock Lesnar, and he will be as hot as he ever was uh, before he got injured. And that match will be insane, and I would love it to bits. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as as far as far should, um, I as much as I'd like to see the Undertaker, I don't think he should. I think no. Taker only has one match left to him, and we all know what I think that is. I think the guy that should beat Lesnar is a guy who's arguably, pound for pound, one of the strongest guys on the roster, and that is Cesaro. Okay. A like former it. Paul Heyman guy, a guy that is already over with his in-ring skills. He can win the Rumble and go on to a Mania push. Heyman guy versus former Heyman guy. Okay. I dig it. Dig it. Now the um, question of who will. Uh, well, uh, yeah, probably Cena. 
I'm hoping it's not Cena I mean, this next pay-per-view. probably John Cena. <laughs> I mean, right? Come on, guys. <laughs> Rise I mean, above. The, the, the champ The champ is here. Rise I mean, above. After all. Rise above suplex. Rise above Germans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, said America. <laughs> wow. Um, that should be his next shirt, Rise Above Germans. Wow. Um... I'm sure we'll go into SummerSlam a bit later to discuss that match. I'm hoping, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm hoping it is the long haul to WrestleMania and Roman Reigns' triumphant, you know, rise. I like mm-hmm. the Shield idea. Doubt it'll happen. Um, but then, yeah, that's, where that's too cool to have. Where does Seth Rollins fit in? I don't see Seth Rollins. What what will happen to Brock Lesnar to, you know, put him down enough? I think Seth Rollins holds off on cashing in until after Lesnar loses. I think after WrestleMania. Yeah. At this point. Like, he's he's just going to walk around with that for a while. I you know. know. Just cool. He's the backup plan for the authority, too. So I think I think Seth Rollins will do it. Yeah? I, I think Seth Rollins will be the one because I have a feeling, like, Cena or someone is going to get so... Like just violent with Brock that they're just spent. Like even if it's a returning Undertaker, like if it's a returning Undertaker who just attacks Brock out of nowhere, mm-hmm. not even for the title, just for revenge purposes. And I, I would love to see a Shield three-way main event for the title of Mania. If we're gonna give Roman Reigns the belt, it should be a Shield three-way dance. Yeah, okay. As much as I love um, Seth Rollins, I think if he were to even even in the case of like you mentioned, screwy whatever cash in thing, um, if that's the case, Brock Lesnar that has to be the point where Brock Lesnar never comes back. Mm. I mean, in my opinion, because I feel like that is the slaying of a monster, and if you slay a monster, you can't come back. <laughs> but you can always <laughs> rebuild the monster to be something else later. Too. But he, but. At the point where he is now, Sork, mm-hmm. the monster he is now. He right is now. like a, a, a. How do you rebuild bigger than that? That's true. That's true. But it would take a, it would take a lot. Maybe he doesn't have have that. Uh, I think I, I think Mad Mike what he said is plausible though. I mean, you could have Triple H come out and be like, "You think I forgot what you did to me and what you did to my family?" And then just I don't know, hit him with a car or something. <laughs> I don't know. Or, or it's gonna have to be drastic. Thing. An elimination chamber match. Good man. Yeah. From the way yeah. the reports, the shit out of Brock the whole time. From the way the reports are going, not to you know be all insidery or whatever. The reports are basically saying that Lesnar has signed for matches in September, in January, and Mania. So he will do Night of Champions. He will do Royal Rumble. He will do Mania. Hmm. And I like that idea a lot. <laughs> I don't. I don't like that idea. If you're trying to sell the network. Yeah, your your champion disappearing. You, uh, have, to have, you, you can't, have to have your champion on pay per view. You can't get rid I, of him. I think uh, it goes back to what I said before. It, it takes the belt to a new level. And now, get, it may hurt the network thing. That now, I that. I like this but, idea, and I think this is actually a Mark Madden thing that I read today. Uh, the idea that you know we're all like, well, Brock's not around. He's not going to be defending the championship. Da 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 da. But um. Taking it back to you know the cha- that was a, that was a, and I'm paraphrasing Mark Madden. You can go read his article, um, but I like the idea so much. Uh, you know the, the '90s era took gave us a champion match every week, right? The champion wrestling every week. Before mm-hmm. that, you didn't see Hulk Hogan wrestle a lot, guys. Like yeah. it was at the house shows, they could sell tickets to that. It was at the pay per views, which were like four times a year back then um maybe yeah. once in a while on saturday night's main event but those even those were a big deal it's not like i w- started watching him on superstars right it uh, validates the title it, it does it, it allows the, it allows the championship matches to actually mean something and i have the opinion where if you're expecting a championship match each show they're gonna get watered down Exactly. Uh, okay, so yeah, I understand him being there for night champions. That's, makes sense. That's when you get stupid stuff like, why has this uh, 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 ex champion not won a match in the last month and yeah. he still has a belt? That's when and we get into that situation. That's they're when trying you also to make it get to night of champions. Makes sense for him to be there because obviously <laughs> the theme of the show is champions. Then the next pay per view is Hell in the Cell. 
So are they just going to have a throwaway Hell in the Cell match just because it's for a championship? Mm-hmm. Have, here's the thing. Build a feud to that pay-per-view and have it be the focal point of the pay-per-view. Exactly. Maybe exactly. maybe put Ambrose and Rollins in there. Um, Ambrose so, and Rollins. Tonio, Tonio you should read true. Madden because he is the super genius and he actually does know what he's talking about. Uh, he has some good ideas on there. 30-day um, defense roll. Come on. Respect the kayfabe. I'm with you on that. Yeah, but he's got, but he's got the authority in his pocket. That's true too. That is true too. They, they can, they can say fuck the thirty day clause. Well, it's I not, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind if you only see Brock at the pay per view. Mm-hmm. Like if you only see Brock at the pay per view and Heyman is his hype man. That way, in order to see the champion, you have to get the network or you have to buy the pay per views. I like, like that. that. I do like that. Like that because that to me, like. Brock will not wrestle non-title matches. He won't be put in bullshit tag team matches. He won't be pull, put in bullshit six-man matches. He is literally wrestling for the title every match that he has. And I think I think that's really the way to do it because you have you have to have your champion represented on every pay-per-view. I'm sorry. You have to. Mm-hmm. I, in this day and age, every fan has come to expect the champion represented in some form or capacity on the pay-per-view. I I think you can teach them differently though. I think to say that the fan the fact the fans expect it is basically saying, Well, we've been doing this for years, we might as well keep doing it. And yeah, but I think if SummerSlam I think if some sorry WrestleMania even WrestleMania one, like even though there was no title defense, the champion was represented. That's fine. And and, and you can have Lesnar still represented. I don't mind that. But I I just feel like the biggest selling point for me, at least for SummerSlam and why it was so good was because it was so fresh and you could tell that they were actually taking risks. And I feel like them just saying, well, we have to have a championship defense every month is not them taking a risk, a risk that they have every ability now to take. Whether it works or not, I'm just happy that they're going to experiment. I'm, I'm glad they're doing something different and something interesting. I mean, they've, that that main event certainly got my attention, and I'm really interested to see what they're going to do with it. And all this being said, there's a rematch at Night of Champions, and Cena could just as easily rise above and win yes, the there title. There's just there's yeah. just as much of a chance as that happening in three weeks. Ideally, in my in my ideal world, guys, I want to see the comeback. He builds up. He's adversity. Da 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 da. He has a better standing against Lesnar but comes that close and doesn't make it. That's fair. I think, I think if they want to tell a story that way that's fine. Because I mean we are talking about yes he beat him before but, but that's before he was on this monster roll and it's about yeah. momentum uh, from Undertaker. And plus um, the match he beat Brock in before was no DQ. That's true too. Yeah. And But here's the thing WWE um, you, you did really good this past Sunday. You did really, really good. Can you just allow yourself to kind of do good? <laughs> Can you just accept it sometimes and be like, yeah, you did something good. Let's let's continue that. I, I uh, it's the, I hope that sort. I hope that that's the story they tell. I hope that that's the story they tell. But in the back of my mind, I fear it's just going to be the two men having a normal WWE style match where they just trade finishers constantly. And it's going to be really terrible. Either way, they have everybody's attention, and a lot of people are going to be watching that pay per view. Yeah, so. I guess. Um, anyways, with that, hey, I want to give a shout out before we get to our voicemails here to our friends at Slice on Broadway. Some great pizza. Great. Can we call it New York style, Mike? I think it's close enough. You got your approval. I know close. that. Pretty damn close. Probably the closest to New York style you're going to get in the Pittsburgh area, and it is fantastic. Uh, but go check them out. They're here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, right down the tracks in Beachview here, and also a new location in Carnegie, PA. If you're visiting town and you see that Carnegie exit, just hop off there, get down to Main Street. You'll find it. You'll find it, and you won't be sorry. I know our friend Father Spoon, Doug Durda of the Should I Drink That podcast, uh, has found a new home with that. And he's from actually, he's like down the road from the one here, but he might find himself down there because there's a wonderful L house apparently right next to the place or right by the place. Uh, so uh, that that's going to spend a lot of his time. Uh, great guys, if you have, if you uh, uh, get down there, make sure you heard about him on the Wrestling Mayhem show. If you're not down there, tell me I wish you could get down there. 
and uh, hit them up on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, but check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and thank them for supporting us in what we do here in the podcasting world. Thanks, guys. Uh, so uh, we have some voicemails. There was a lot of reaction on Sunday night. There was a lot of hurt feelings. There was a lot of emotion. Um, so uh, we'll just kind of put it to the test and we'll vamp because I didn't set these up while I was doing the ad. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, there was, like I said, there was a lot of emotion. Um, <laughs> is this, a, is this the, right, the proper order in here now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. First up, we have an email from uh, A. Carlins. I don't know which one, but it is certainly one of them. <laughs> Oh, thank you for that confirmation there. As I wait for it to learn, um, yes. Uh, but but no, we we had the party over there at the Carlins. So There's a little background. They did have. I don't know if you saw the. I think it was tweeted. Uh, they hello, did have hello, a. Hello. Oh, there hello. she goes. There is a John Cena, and there is a Brock Lesnar side of the room. It was taped off. Uh, literally taped off, like sections of the room. There was even a little uh, a section for the Kali portion with the Ritz, even though he was nowhere on the pay-per-view. Um, so I will say, while I was segregated, I did have a very comfy chair. You did. You did. You had a lot of room over there. People saw us getting stacked on the one side. So let's see what one of the Carlins had to say. Hello, fellow uh, May Hammers. Um, it's uh, Mrs. Carlin's wife of Main Street, mainstream media, Matt Carlin. Um, I want to apologize if last night if I scared anyone um, during the rematch of Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. Um, anger took over me and I began <laughs> um, throwing things at my husband, pillows, plastic cups, maybe the remote control. <laughs> Oh, the next one. Sorry, for, sorry. You know, for Dean to be gone, um, I'm giving up wrestling for a while. Um, I don't know if there's going to be any pay per view parties anymore. Ooh, what? Going to come back. Um, that's about all. Have a great night. Huh. Yeah. Ah, so things kind of went south there last night after Raw, it seems. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Um. Wow. Uh. You know, this was Jake, Miss Carlin's is a is a is a big Dean Ambrose fan. Uh. Big, big, uh big, that big. is an understatement. It did get violent in the hangout. It was. It got weird. It got weird for <laughs> a moment. Um. We might have almost called the cops on them, but none of us could remember their address. <laughs> Uh, if I if I knew their address, I would have called, but that wouldn't have helped as I'm in New York. Yeah, I, I know their address, but I w I had fallen asleep, so. <laughs> <laughs> so we all have an excuse that's good to see um, as you see I accidentally preloaded that there uh, we got one from Bo Diggity Hello, fellow no that's not right hammers. I closed the wrong one. Oh no sword. oh no sword. they all look the same that's they're, they're, racist they're Google voice do flickies swords back on the whiskey oh. <laughs> and the oh, it is both fucking Diggity. You haven't heard my voice in a while, have you? I haven't. Not since Sunday. Uh, I just got done watching SummerSlam. I had a very good time at the Carlin's house. Thank you to uh, the men and Jim for having us over. Uh, and, and they made fun of things. And it was hilarious. And uh, Matt Carlin some Superman punch me. And I sold it like death because I'm a dad and I'm a dad too. Now, to uh, the argument uh, last week on the Mayhem show. Where Mad Mike uh, claims that there was not too many in the bank matches. Uh, I'm ruling in favor of Watchbox on a technicality. They promoted the WWE World Heavyweight title match as a Money in the Bank match. Not a traditional Money in the Bank match, but due to words, Watchbox wins. <laughs> due to uh, words. Anyways, I realize now, I, 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 I did some thinking here on the drive back to my house, and I realized something. The Brock Lesnar John Cena match was a reverse John Cena match. Let's take a look at the finish, shall we? Now, I'm sure somebody's going to correct me. I'm sure Mad Mike or Steven will correct me if I'm wrong here. Because every show needs an unbuttonment. Brock reversed the STF, got up, punched him a couple times, and then F5 for the win. That's John Cena's move. 
victory maneuver. That is literally John Cena's victory maneuver. Reverse whatever it is that he's in, immediate AA win. That was a reverse John Cena match. Also, shout out to Brock Lesnar for suplexing, shout out to Brock Lesnar for suplexing John Cena until he died. 16 German suplexes, suplexes on top of suplexes and complex. It was unbelievable. It was 20 minutes of Brock Lesnar suplexing the fuck out of John Cena. Sailor Moon hard eyes forever. To you, Brock Lesnar. You can sound like a real quiet dude forever. And like you literally did blood piss vomit John Cena. Uh, SummerSlam was bad as fuck. I love every match, except for that Rain Norton match. That kid is how you pull a crowd off until they're frozen and shoved into a goddamn iceberg. What? It just wasn't there. Uh, but let's just point out that Roman Reigns and Randy Orton had a worse match than Page AJ. Page AJ Murder Death Fest 2014. That shit was awesome. <laughs> uh, WWE, uh, you, every WWE fan who enjoyed that match. And the other match should be thanking the ever living shit out of Sarah Delray. This is his whole car thanks, road. Thanks for what your words home. and potentially king. This has been full fucking diggity. F. I'm sorry, full F thing. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! The oh no! There's more. There's the another one. The efforts were cut off. <laughs> the efforts were cut the F off. Uh, with Bo Diggity here. Uh, he did call back though. Uh, there is a three minute limit. It better be a good three minutes if you go that long. Fuck you, Google boy. Fuck you into a river. <laughs> fuck you under the river, through the bedrock, and into the center of the goddamn earth. But you ever fucking cut me off again. <laughs> Full F digging. F. Fuck you, Google boy. Fuck you with a 12 inch dildo. Right in the goddamn ear hole. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Fuck you into the river is probably my new favorite thing. <laughs> he also, uh, he, uh, LB, you also sent a voicemail. Now listen, you guys have been telling me that I sent in a voicemail. I don't remember sending one in, but uh, I mean, apparently I did. Let's let's hear it. Okay. I can't wait to see your reactions to your mysterious voicemail. It looks short. You were driving, were you? Rise above hate. Oh, Riz drove. Rise above hate. They're giving me free drinks because I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, rise above hate. <laughs> Are you mumbling rise above hate? <laughs> well, that's definitely what it sounds like. Thank you. <laughs> it's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any recollection there, LB? Uh... I, we're going to have to ask Riz if he comes on in the second half, but I'm pretty sure he roofied me, <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, or he left me at a bar. LB, do you, do you, do you need a hanky? Are you okay? Not anymore. <laughs> are, I'm are, sober are sure? now. Are you sure? No, I'm actually not really sure. <laughs> okay. It's, right. Listen, it hasn't been a real easy time for me. Okay, we know, buddy. We know. Wow, on that note, we're going to give uh, LB a little bit of recoup time. Uh, we'll be right back. Uh, mm -hmm. But in the meantime, of course, please check out. We got... <laughs> oh, whoa. DVDs uh, came out recently for our debate aggression six a great time a couple weeks ago where um, uh, Matt Hardy came to town uh, as well as uh, Shane Douglas brother love was a part of the weekend as well uh, and that's now available on digital download and DVD 799 if you want that on digital download over at sorgatronmedia.com slash store we got the preview up as well as the RWA wrap up where you can find out everything that happened there and uh, find out if that DVD is worthwhile for you I think it's going to be. Um, and uh, for you guys on video, we're going to uh, play actually the teaser, and we'll be right back after this.
and of course check out uh, the RWA Aggression Six as well as uh, uh, new releases from <laughs> VOW, Vicious Outcast Wrestling, and so much more uh, over at sorgatronmedia.com slash store and sign up for the newsletter so you know when we have new releases up all the time. Um, so and with that, let's go and remember when. Hmm. This week on Remember When, of course, we had a, a crazy, uh, kind of unexpected match happen with John Cena, as we, as we talked about in the first half here. Um, you know, it was basically a squash match, right? Mm-hmm. In uh, every sense of the word. So this one, I don't know if I forget which one of you guys that just told me that you wrote this in here, squashed the most brutal and most of the the most brutal of the most high profile squash matches you have ever seen. Yep. I'm trying to think a good think of a good one. I got one. I got one. Yeah, uh, go go ahead, guys. LB. WrestleMania thirteen. Okay. There was a young up and coming wrestler. You may have heard of him. His name at the time was Hunter Hearst Helmsley. <laughs> this is good. And he was wrestling a returning legend. That's right, the Ultimate Warrior. Oh. And in a matter of seconds, the match was over. <laughs> wow. The Ultimate Warrior took a pedigree, did not sell it, and pinned Triple H. <laughs> and that was it, the end. Because wrestlers from the eighties are all assholes. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 rest in peace. No, dis- you know no disrespect. Rest in peace. <laughs> but this, I will say that match puts a lot of shit into perspective as far as oh Triple H he buries everybody. Uh, he doesn't fucking rightfully so. Fucking Ultimate Warrior, fucking kicking out of a dude's finish, and or not even kicking out of a dude's finish, just fucking no selling it. Didn't he kick out one? If if Triple H is to be believed, uh, when he went up to Warrior to uh, talk about the match, Warrior said, "I'm beating you in seven seconds," <laughs> <laughs> and walked away. Uh, That's mine, yeah. Eamon. What do you got? I got one that uh, was around my time when I started watching wrestling. It was the first time I ever saw like a big sort of squash match. I uh, kind of got kind of shocked by it, but it was really cool. Um, uh. Chris Benoit is a multiple-time United States champion, and one of the times he won the United States championship was at Never. some pay-per-view, I want to say it was a SummerSlam, yes, uh, where he beat Orlando Jordan in 20 seconds. <laughs> with a crowd of face. If it wasn't and a it, SummerSlam, it was a bash. Was, was it a bash? Okay. It might have been a bash. Um, but, uh, you, know, that's, you know, that's a normal thing. Benoit just beat him kind of handedly. Uh, the best part was, though, that he kept playing it up to the fact that he would be in backstage segments where he would challenge himself to drinking a cup of coffee faster than him, than him beating Orlando Jordan. I remember and that. And play the clip of the match back with the timer as he drank coffee. And it was glorious. That was the best. Oh, that was the best. And there, there wasn't there something where like he kept beating him like in quicker times. Yes, I think so. Yeah, on SmackDown. On SmackDown. Oh, so good. That was funny. Poor, poor, Jordan. poor Jordan. Another another squash match that I would say at least makes sense. Wait, fuck Orlando wait. Jordan. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> can I say the I most... You were going to list an actual different one, and I was like, everybody else got Can picked. I mention the original high-profile squash match, the one that oh. we still make fun of today, this day? Uh-huh. Special Delivery Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Got squashed Sork. in like 10 seconds by the King Kong Bundy at WrestleMania 1. Sorg, can I ask you a question? Yes. What was he delivering specially? <laughs> Apparently quick finishes. <laughs> For King Kong Bundy and the ladies. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah my- all right. Uh, I Mine was not actually on a uh, televised wrestling event. Okay. Uh, mine was at a live show. After the Survivor Series in 1994, I want to say, where yes, um, correct. in Madison Square Garden, Diesel won the WWE title oh, from yeah. Bob Backlund oh, in no. about eight seconds by the match starting, 
Nash kicking him, power bombing him, and that's all she wrote. Mm. He literally wow. spent more time on screen in Ninja Turtles 2. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the 90s had really weird title changes. They did. Yeah, they did. Like they did. I, I, I wonder why Bret Hart, you know, lost about to Bob Backlund, and then like a few days later, Bob Backlund lost to the Diesel. I wonder why that happened. <laughs> Maybe didn't, didn't uh, Diesel also win the Intercontinental title that way? Like when he first came out and he beat Razor Ramon for it. I believe so. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's not like Bret Hart has a history of not wanting to lose to people or anything. No, no, at all. No. That's not a wrestler thing at all. <laughs> it's, not like has, it's not like that Diesel has that same history. This uh, is a horrible wrestling cycle, guys. People not putting other people over, and then those people not putting the other people that they're supposed to put over over. And it's stop it, stop it, wrestlers. <laughs> uh, Riz has joined us here in in the discussion on the. I on did, and, and and can I first uh, go by go. go Go really quickly to what we discussed, what you guys discussed in the earlier program, okay. the earlier portion of the okay. show. Okay. Sure. I um, guess. Lunchbox. Yes. You know damn well <laughs> that was your roofie. <laughs> I just wanted to forget. Okay, I just wanted to forget what happened, and I will never. I just... you, you will. That was your forget me not. That was my forget me not, and it didn't no. work because, as it turns out, it was just melatonin, and that doesn't work the same. Mm. Now, no matter uh, what that gypsy woman said. As for the question at hand, um, I want a deep, a, a deep meaning of the word squash. Um, seriously, uh, but on SmackDown, they had in order for Hornswoggle to win. The, uh, the, the enter into the Royal Rumble, he had to go through a mini rumble of his own oh, with mini God. Batista, oh, mini mini Kane. Uh, there was another one. Wasn't was there like Mini Vader, or am I mis mistaking that? No, Mini no, Mini Mankind. Mini Mankind. Mini Mankind. And he threw every single one of them out, and then everybody say who's going to come out next. The great Kali. Mm. But, but that match didn't happen. But the, the part where what I'm talking about is the fact that Hornswoggle was eliminating each one of these within seconds. Quite hilariously, too. May I know also Riz that that match between the Great Kali and Hornswoggle never did didn't did not happen. That is because it happened later on a pay per view. <laughs> that match yes. happened on a pay per view, guys. Yes, it did. You paid <laughs> you paid your money to see that. It was more than nine ninety nine. That, that pay per view. And now you can yeah now you can see it on the WWE Network for nine ninety nine. And I just posted the video of the mini battle royal in the chat room. Awesome, awesome. Uh, oh, it was Mister. It was mini Mister Kennedy. Mister Kennedy. That's and it. Because he couldn't oh, reach the. He couldn't reach the thing. Oh <laughs> my that. God! I want to see more of mini Mister Kennedy. Jesus Christ! <laughs> he's he's doing his shtick better than Kennedy is in TNA. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh wow! Wow! This is a ten-minute match. How is this a ten-minute match? I thought it would be shorter. Ah! Ah! Yes! <laughs> Point. Anyways, if you have any squash Listen. match, remember when's please tell us on the Twitter's at Mayhem Show, Facebook, uh, Google Plus Wrestling Mayhem Show, or the group. However you want to, or if you want to email us, good times at wrestling mayhem dot com. That's right. Uh, so guys, uh, if you're digging this, if you're digging this. Uh, if you if you like our logo, you like our logo right there, right there in the corner of the video. If you're here with us or on your Wait, iTunes uh, cover art or something, we got some great T-shirts at prowrestlingtees.com/wms. Uh, the logo plus great designs by the great Alex Cars. 
uh, who up until recently has been actually doing our, our DVD covers as well for the uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance. Uh, Good Times of Wrestling Ma'am Show, property of WMS. I gotta get myself a new one since I gave one to LB. Um, and of course, while you're there, pick up first pick up a shirt to support us, then support uh, all of your favorite wrestlers. All the guys uh, from the 80s, 90s, all the way up. Razor Ramon, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, uh, Mick Foley, Jim, Superfly Jimmy Snuka. And you can also go in there, check out other podcasts, check out other wrestler t-shirts, check out a lot of the indie guys. Um, I think, wait, is Zach Gowan on there? I think Zach Gowan does have a t-shirt. No, yes. I don't, no, he isn't on here. He isn't on here. No, no, no. but uh, Gregory Iron, his uh, friend from, I, I believe he's on here. Wait, am I wrong about that too? No, he, no he's there. Think... Gregory Iron's on there. Um, uh, Jerry Briscoe's on here for some reason. Jimmy Jacobs, Johnny Gargano, another friend, friend of the show. Friend uh, of every show that we do. Evan Jalistic. Evan Jalistic. You had it. You had it. I had it. Is on but here. He, he also has a Big t-shirt. Zeke, he has a very nice t-shirt. You should buy them. Anthony Nice, Blue Mini. Everybody, support these guys. This is how they're trying to make money. Uh, support them doing pro wrestling if you dig them. Wear their shirt. Nobody will get it if you wear it to the mall, but if you go to the wrestling show, you'll be the coolest kid there. Some may get it if you wear it. ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS to start you off. Um, so, do I, hey, so... Well, can we touch on that? Did, so, did we confirm this? The the, the bully is Ray it, left is it TNA. Real? Anybody? I think real? I, yeah, I guess it's real. So it seems really odd to me. Okay. So, uh, uh, we, 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 what we're talking about? This story came across a wire that 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 he had left TNA, and we're we're trying to follow up so, so, to comment on it because that's pretty significant because he's kind of their biggest guy lately. Well, sure, not only that. Uh, Team 3D is supposed to get inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame at Bound for Glory. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and they have been pushing that, oh, like a lot. They've and, been pushing it so far. And not to spoil anything, but in the upcoming weeks, they're not going to not push it. In fact, they're going to push it more, because the Wolves, the Hardys, and Team 3D have a three-match series of stipulation matches like i i mean unless unless he's just saying that he's not going to resign with them but oh it, it, I, the thing is i i never liked face bully ray no I think, no 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 because but, but, but really it, well, what, Where does he put that mean lady through a table? But he also threatened the you know power drive kids. Yeah, that's yes. true. Unborn no, babies. not just not just kids. Babies. Unborn babies. Yes, but um, but he also he put that really shrill lady through a table and and yeah. her nephew. Yeah, that's also so they arrested putting... him. They arrested his nephew, her nephew, for no reason. No, uh, no, uh, no, Amen. First of all, he assaulted a police officer, and then he tried to bribe a police officer. Both of those are arrestable offenses. Oh, yeah, definitely. Trust so, me, the New York City cops have arrested people for less. Oh, God. And I know, I know Tonio is going to hate me for this, but um, Mark Madden on WrestleZone mm-hmm. had an amazing story a few months ago about Bully Ray. Everyone knows Bully Ray is going into the Hall of Fame. Bully Ray is now the top face in TNA. Mm-hmm. Bully Ray is probably going to was probably going to make a lot of money. And now Bully Ray is leaving TNA. Where does that leave TNA? They just lost four things major to them. In and one he was an agent. He was an agent in the back, too. It wasn't like he was just doing stuff on screen, which he's been a huge focal point of that company. He mm. was working backstage for them, too. Uh, I mean, if this, I, is, I if this is real, this is a huge... This is probably yeah. the... De- like, this is worse than Hogan leaving. This is worse than Sting leaving. This is worse than Matt Hardy coming back. This... <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the death knell in TNA. Honestly, it it feels like that to me. First off, uh, Bully Ray can still go. Out of all those guys you mentioned, 
Bully Ray can still oh, put on. Oh, I argue that, that Bully Ray, Ray can go better now than he could 10 years ago. Bully yeah. Ray is in the Easily. best shape of his career. Oh, yeah. Completely. Like, so, I, I saw the dude. The dude is jacked. Mm-hmm. Like, Remember he, when they tried to split both of them up? And how bad both of them were? Mm-hmm. Bully Ray improved. Oh, yep. my God, yep. yeah. He ran with it. He freaking ran he, with it. He, he found something. He found something. In, I will give TNA this. TNA was able to do something that WWE was never able to do. Mm-hmm. Get over Christian as a singles guy and get over Bully Ray as a singles guy. Mm-hmm. WWE tried that for years on both those guys. It didn't work. And TNA was able to do it. Bully Ray just found what he needed to do in TNA. He found he, he was a dick. That was his that was his niche. He was a dick. It's, his a, name it's a good was heel. Bully Ray. It's a good heel though. Yeah, oh, he's it's a, a good amazing heel. heel. Yeah. But but it's a horrible face. So you know, the I think war, I think the worst face. I think what happens here is you know, uh, creatively or whatever, it, they're they're different animals. Some people flourish in their different environments, right? You can see this in the business world, on creative world, all the time. And you got a little bit of both going on here, right? Um, so somebody like a Bully Ray or an Ethan Carter gets to go to TNA, and whatever reins get loosened up are the ones that they need to find that thing. Versus some people with WWE flourish under whatever that that line of tutelage, that line of pressure, um, you know, and and that's where they will thrive. You know, mm-hmm. uh, that's why I think you see something like Christian doing what he did in TNA. He, I don't know if they just give him more because he's the, we got a WWE guy. You know, um, but well, they it was they a, actually put faith in him. And they, yeah, the, well, the, there you go. They put faith in him because he was like the best they could get, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and look what happened there. It was it was some great stuff. And he came back. He's bland again. Nobody will do anything with him here. You know, of WWE. He, of course, he gets fair, injured he all the time. Injured constantly. He is yeah. getting yeah. He's he's just injury prone and needs to kind of move on um, and be a character but or something. I, I don't. If you listen to his interview with Chris Jericho, okay, he's he said he's not injury prone. He's just like. He's had con- he's had a concussion, so it's all about clearing that test. Yeah, like that's really what because he's not injured. He's just you know it's concussion syndrome, and they don't want anything to happen because so, they have the new protocols. In so place. everything's over cautious because of something like that. Well, yeah, so. I mean, look, it's like Chris Nowinski. Chris Nowinski was perfectly fine physically, but. Mm-hmm. Because of his repeated concussion syndrome, they couldn't allow him to perform. After you have, yeah, after you have a concussion that so many times, you can't put your body through uh, uh, thirty car crashes in a night, which is every time you take a bump. So mm-hmm. certainly. So anyway. here, here's my question to Mad Mike, and maybe some of you guys can answer it too. Mm-hmm. Uh, since he's leaving, who steps up to the plate? Uh, if there is still a plate, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think we, I think EC, I think we crutch with the Hardy Boys. I, I think they're just going like uh, these guys are familiar, uh, and, and and they jump on them. That feels like the TNA way. Yeah. I kinda, yes, I yeah. do wish it was EC three. Like I think Mike was about EC3 to say, three is already there. Though, I think. Oh, you think he's, yeah, he, he's yeah. up there. Yeah. Uh, but the guys yeah. like Sonata or or friend of the show DJ Z. Yeah, mm-hmm. I will guys, say, uh, I'm not going to get into spoilers. I really, really, really like the direction they're going in with Sonata. Mm-hmm. I what, really, um, really like it. Um, right now, the, right now, the the James Storm stuff, the barn raving scenes they're doing. Ew. Yeah, um, like like James Storm is training Sonata to be his new protege, and it's re- it's really good. It's really good, you guys. I I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, but other than that, they need to pull the trigger on EC3. Hmm? They need they need to have him be the champion because Lashley is not over. Mm-mm. Lashley is having good matches. Well, I enjoy Lashley, Lashley thoroughly. I, I Honestly, enjoy Lashley, but he's not over. Lashley you cannot talk. Lashley and- Lashley needs to be rebuilt by WWE. He's one of those guys. If he never would have left WWE, I think he'd still be a uh, main eventish player. He'd be Sheamus at least. But that's not a bad spot. Yeah, but we have enough of those. Well, true, but I mean, I mean, for him, it would be better. Yeah. Than what he's got but now. I mean, he'll actually, he'll actually is fine. Mm-hmm. But 
TNA right now needs a champion who can talk and work. Mm-hmm. And that guy is EC3. I, I really, I really truly think so. I don't know why they haven't pulled the trigger on him yet as the champion, because he's the best part of that company right now. He has got the best mic skills and he, he hasn't had a bad match. And if you can have a champion that goes that comes out there at, who hasn't been pinned, that's that's at least more of a draw than a guy who's going to fight in Bellator in a couple of weeks. But but but, but MMA and, and and stuff. It's on Spike TV next. <laughs> I'm sorry. Take take a look at that giant one third of a screen that they cha- that they have. <laughs> wow. You watch yourself leg kick TKO. Will come on here and. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure she will not defend TNA. No, she will not <laughs> defend Bellator. I don't think. Nope, not that um, either. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, what, whatever. Oh, yeah. War Machine. That's his name. Oh fuck, War Machine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's yeah. not even. That's that. Iron that's Patriot. not even bother. You know, Iron I love that I don't know half the shit you guys are talking about because I haven't watched yeah, TNA okay, in so long. You don't, in don't look so it up long. And I, I'm like, I, every time I was like, I should check it out. I like, I want to see what Zima's doing. But then it's like, but then there's the rest. Zima, I have a question. Oh, go ahead. I have a question about all this shit for you guys that watch TNA. Mm-hmm. Um, so, okay, so let's say that what everyone's saying is true. Bully Ray's leaving TNA, right? I think uh, I know where this is going, but yes. Do you guys think that he will return to WWE, and do you think he'd take his brother with him? In yes. a harpy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, certainly. In a Hell, hey, I think I was. think they'd have a good no. run in Ring of Honor, to be honest. No follow-up no. question. And, and when, oh, I say okay. this, when I say this, I'm not comparing the two teams. But, guys, they put the tag team titles in the New Age Outlaws in 2014. Uh, Come on. <laughs> they did do that. Fair point. That's true. Um, well, that that leads into my next question: uh, Would they do anything with them on screen, or would they just make them agents, and that's the end of them? Either way, um, we would see them breaking up fights in suits. Either um, way, either way, they're in a better position. Yeah. Dudley's versus Usos versus Wyatt's make it happen. They, those guys, that team will be the guys who go in WWE take off the. Uh, the shitty watch that TNA bought them for their Hall of Fame <laughs> and burn it. Hey, they, it. They got those watches from the Universal Studios gift shop, all right? Those were not cheap. Kurt, uh, Kurt Angle probably uh, re gifted his. <laughs> <laughs> to pay for. Uh, he took his back to Zales. Uh, uh, he has watches. two of them. Probably. Yeah, you can go to the red, white, and blue store right down here on uh, Route 19 and find Kurt Angle's watch. Did Aiden uh, just drop a Zales reference? I, that's the only place I could think of that sells watches. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, wow, where do I Thunder go from that? Slam. Where do I? No, 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 no. I had another. I had another thing for the Dudleys. No, I can't wait for the Dudleys to come back. And everybody asks, where have they been the last ten years? <laughs> just like with Rob Van Dam. So <laughs> no, I think I really think. If if nobody in WWE looks at Bully Ray and doesn't see something they can work with there, if nothing else, just elevate some other people. Man, come on! <laughs> I'm know? sure. I mean, I mean, I mean, they're uh, or even or even the the agent thing because I mean they do. I think they're mm-hmm. still running uh, their they're still running their their school down there. I think Devon's still running his smoothie shop, so he might not want to come back full time. But even they don't. Even they do like the New Age Outlaw thing. You know, they can be the nostalgia thing for a few months, you know, mm-hmm. um, or pop up uh, <laughs> beating up a kid that won a Tostitos contest for uh, SummerSlam. Uh, mm. <laughs> I hate the outlaws. I'm sorry. <laughs> I enjoy them. Well, the, the Dudleys are better why? better workers than the outlaws. I mean, that's what yeah, I, because I, they I, were on when he watched wrestling originally. They were, but also they were. I've watched Outlaws matches back, and they're not that great guys. Yeah, but you didn't watch them when that's all there was. Yes, that's true. You, you, you like watch- the wrestlers that wrestled when you watched wrestling. Listen, I just watched a Billy Chuck, Billy and Chuck match from, and it was amazing. It was. <laughs> they, they were a good tag team. Chuck Palumbo wrestling's, wrestling's main currency is nostalgia. Yep. Yes, especially yes. in this day. Jesus. For nine ninety nine, you too. Oh yes. <laughs> For nine ninety nine, you can relive all of your childhood. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Speaking of that, 
let's talk SummerSlam. So good. So good. I'm with AJ on his uh, Paige and AJ murder death fest. Wasn't I just telling everybody? I was just telling everybody. I was like, Paige has not had a good NXT level match since she got to the main roster. And And last night she exceeded it. But it didn't have to. It wasn't super long, but they told a great story and they played off of their previous encounters. I and still think we we could have taken out five minutes of headlocks from Randy Orton and given it to Paige and AJ. I, I didn't hate that match. I, I actually kind of liked the Randy Orton Roman Reigns yeah, match. It was a yeah. WWE style match. But That's when everybody pulled out the Supercards game. Yeah, yep. but the, 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 fair enough. But it was fine. I thought the, the ending sequence was cool. By the way, by the way, for that being the worst match on the card, says something. Right, yeah. uh, that 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 was the low point, and it's not really that low of a point. Yeah, I really, really the lumberjack match was really good because they were actually. Oh like, my god! They were actually yeah. innovative with the lumberjack stipulation because yes. the lumberjack stipulation is just so tired out, and they were creative with it. And also, I, Damian Sandow wore a lumberjack hat. He did. Um, I was wondering what he was trying to be. Was he just trying to be a lumberjack? He was a lumberjack, mm-hmm. and he's okay. I thought, never... I thought it was a Robin Williams tribute. Like, I thought he was trying to be Robin Williams in, in one of his movies. Hmm. Yeah. He looked like he had Robin Williams' hair. I don't know. He always has Robin Williams' hair. He's a lumberjack hat. But, like, I love that they, they, they were creative with the lumberjack stipulation. They even played off of their old stuff doing, like, faking the people out with the, like, attempting the balcony thing. Like, playing off of old shield matches. Like, that's fucking awesome. And it shows how creative they are. Um... Ambrose and Rollins are fucking money, and they really deliver some awesome stuff. Um, see Monday. Yeah, see Monday. <laughs> um, and the main event, which is probably one of my favorite matches in a good while. And I, I'll say this, because we've mentioned it before on the show. Um, we, I think, are to a degree some... We're, we're fans of John Cena's work in the fact that we know that he can bust out some really good stuff. It's, it's, it's known that he can bust out some really good matches. Um, he, di- he barely did anything in this match. And I think this match showcased more than anything that John Cena is a million times better than Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because Hulk, because Hogan, over. Hulk Hogan would never do that. Um, he would never do that uh, match. Uh, don't, don't, he would don't. he would he would lose, but he would have to get his shit. Amen, Amen, Amen. Can you remember box? Yeah, um, I, I'm gonna say the SmackDown two weeks before SummerSlam 2002. Uh, Brock annihilated Hulk Hogan. Fair and enough. Made, and made him cough up his own blood onto Brock's shoulder. Fair and enough. Brock took that blood and wiped it across his chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The death of Brock, I still hold Brock as the only one that actually killed Hulkamania. Now, 1980s Hulk Hogan would not have done no. it. No. Nope. 1990s Hulk that's, Hogan wouldn't do it either. That, nope. That's well and good, but I, I feel like we're getting away from the point, which is John Cena showed a lot of, uh, a lot of character and a lot of, you know... Basically, what was best for business? Yeah, I, I, I a match like that because it was replaying I, well, I today. I completely agree with Eamon. It, because it was replaying today, I'll harken back to the uh, uh, which one is it? Is it the John Cena experience has been playing on the network lately? Uh, mm-hmm. Where he talks about like the position he's in, and he talks about man, I wish there was somebody else to be on this level as well. Yeah. So I think I saw someone tweeted. Um, I don't know if it was anyone important, but someone tweeted. The, uh, the idea that John Cena probably cares about the WWE more than anyone in that company. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. I think Vince McMahon cares about well, it. Well, I, because I, I, it's his. Yes. But as far as being, uh, people who don't have direct ownership to that company, okay. I think John Cena cares more about what's good, like what Lunchbox said, what's best for the company, what's yeah. best for business. Nobody, nobody, else. nobody works harder than John Cena, and I'm not saying that as a bit. I'm not saying it to be funny. It is absolutely true. Nobody is more dedicated than John Cena. Because here's the thing: I think when everyone sees like the whole like oh, C- lol, Cena wins moments or whatever, I think a lot of people immediately target John Cena on those. And it's like, I don't think John Cena. I don't think John Cena has planned that. I think WWE is so Listen. like set has been so set in their ways of like Cena has to win this. 
He has to look good. He has to look no, no, he can't. He, he has to win these matches. Like, I don't think that's Cena being like, no, I'm going over. Yeah, no, that's not him. But, I mean, if you look at it from a business standpoint, I mean, if you're trying to, you know, close a big deal, you're going to send in your most successful guy to close the deal. John mm -hmm. Cena is their most successful and most reliable guy. Yeah. Yeah, because even, even when he's injured, he comes back mm -hmm. quicker than anyone mm -hmm. expects or probably wants him to just because, like, he knows that the company needs him and – he will risk coming back from injury a little too soon to do that. Like, I mean, if you want, if you want to talk comparison, um, CM Punk, like I, I remember hearing it on air, on an interview, uh, or maybe it was even on the DVD or something. When he got injured, he like immediately thought, Oh good. I can have some time off and everything like that. But then they called him back for commentary and <laughs> he was kind of pissed off at that. If they called John, John, like John Cena, if he knew he was going to be out for a significant amount of time, and he, he would probably offer to do commentary or offer to do like every promotional appearance he possibly can in the interim while he's rehabbing. Uh -huh. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just like the dedication that he has and the fact that he knows what WrestleMania signified for Brock Lesnar and how much they need to keep that strong. Mm -hmm. I, I, I get that, that was the biggest rent when we said it last night in the chat room in the uh, hangout. I forgot who said it, but that was the biggest win in wrestling since Hogan over Andre. I, I need to reiterate, and this is an old old topic for me, but um, John Cena is I want to I don't want to say he's the Hulk Hogan, but he's everything I thought Hulk Hogan should have been. Yep. As in, like, when you see something like that special where you see how he is and all the stuff he does and his philosophy on things and how he does things, um, he's a legit he's a legit role model for work ethic, for and everything around that, you know, for children, um, for children, you know, so I work hard and I and I do this and I'm very fortunate and I'm very humble and da 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 and I'm going to do whatever I can for but the can company. Be just as you big know? of a of a of an inspiration, I guess you could say, in that degree for adults. Oh in, yeah, in that, in that he is to me. Fact. Honestly, uh, honestly, no, I watched that special. I'm like, damn, I wish I could be yeah, like I John Cena. Holy crap! Like mm -hmm. not not just like I wish I was like you know freaking muscly and could do that kind of stuff but and like had, just and, just and no just like to day pool. to day you know i'm in like what would john cena do with this you know um because <laughs> well, even even like the make-a-wish thing like if i had done <laughs> I just, I just broke make wishes we would not get through a wrestling mayhem show without me mentioning hey i've done, i've helped 300 kids with make-a-wish yeah, like, you yeah. Would not get through an hour without me saying that once. Yeah, and, uh, and they didn't really that start is putting not it over. Impressive, regardless of what else he does. They didn't start putting it over until like like Make a Wish was like, "Hey, put that over." <laughs> hey, well, we're giving well, you an award because like, you're hey, crazy. This, you know, this is the guy who's done the most wishes ever of any celebrity. Mm -hmm. Like, short of actually curing kids. John Cena has helped the most children in the world. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. On that note, we do have to get out of here. I'm sorry. Uh, but let me know, other than what you've learned from John Cena uh, <laughs> as a person, uh, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Who wants to go first? Uh, I'll go first. Okay. Going off of that match, uh, I learned from wrestling this week uh, in the follow-up to that match that Paul Heyman is not just the greatest manager in professional wrestling. But he is the greatest heel in professional wrestling because he has a true understanding of what a heel should be. Um, I think the promo from Raw elevated that match beyond what it already was. I think people get so set in when they're doing heel promos to be like, to, to the guy that they're facing, the face being like, you're nothing, you're, you're worthless, I'm better than you, you know, all that stuff. Paul Heyman put over John Cena in that promo. Mm -hmm. He said, you are you were resilient. Every time Brock hit, hit you with that suplex, you kept getting up and getting up and getting up. And guess what? That makes Brock Lesnar beating John Cena mean so much more. And Paul got to still be an asshole about it, but he didn't, like, run down Cena. It's, it's basically the old saying goes, if you beat a nobody, what does that do for you? Like... That, you know, so 
I, I think Paul Heyman's legitimately a genius. And that's not, you know, me trying to overhype it. He is one of the most genius people in professional wrestling. Awesome. What about you? Or, actually, do you have one? Sure. Hold on, hold on. We got a uh, wife of the show wants to let us know what she learned this week. Come on. Oh, no. Is this what she here. looked down? Yeah, did you put down the super card yet? Hi. 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 Talking to the microphone. I'm, I'm talking in the mic. Okay. All right. Um, I, I learned that Eva Marie got the mic by his penis. can beat Natty in one move, at least according to Supercard. Drop kick. <laughs> oh, I, I learned that the super monsters. rare Eva Marie has a schoolgirl. That's her finish. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not the schoolgirl. That's a real thing. Right. Uh, what did you learn, Mike? I, I, he just I said it. Oh. No, I, I learned something else. I learned something else. But uh, I also learned that Ric Flair doesn't remember anyone on the show. <laughs> Ric Rick, Rick Flair has gotten to the point where I think the only person he would recognize in WWE is Triple H, Shawn Michaels, and his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure about that third one. Oh. Wow. Wow. What about you, uh, LB? I learned that uh, if you're a big enough fan of, uh, of a professional wrestler that you will be forced to sit by yourself <laughs> with invisible walls erected around you, even when you're surrounded by other pro wrestling fans. I know, I know that feeling. Riz Kali doesn't count as a wrestler, let's be honest. And also it was only your foot. Uh -oh. And only for like 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> My side's still one. Yep, um, yep, he's very lonely. Uh, Riz, we lost your video, but I'll just show this picture of LB with his uh, giant blow-up. I was going to say, from a distance, that does not look like a good picture. No, it doesn't. Uh, Riz, no. what's, what's your remember one? <laughs> um, or whatever we're well, doing. Well, first, right I learned that uh, Mike and I can get you to talk about uh, TNA for more than five seconds. Mm -hmm. Hey, we better get it in now before they're gone yeah. in October. Yep. And also I learned that for their Divas match, for their Divas angle, this angle, all they are doing is reading erotic fan fiction. <laughs> they have to be. They, <laughs> they, have to be. they gotta be. <laughs> to be fair, I'm pretty sure that's all they're doing with the Dean Ambrose Seth Rollins feud too. I mean, come yeah, on. That's just Dean, Dean wrapped himself up in a present for Seth Rollins. I will yeah. say, I'm, I'm I know Dan sure, Rollins has read that one. I'm pretty sure there is a fan fiction out there of Dean Ambrose getting curb stomped into cinder blocks, but the problem is it follows with heavy anal sex. <laughs> and I can't, <laughs> Not and light I can't anal sex, down, heavy light anal, down anal the sex. Episode, write down and, the title. The first time somebody made an anal sex joke that wasn't. And, and USA Network's not going to allow that, okay? They just won't. Well, they just they won't. Will. It'll just be on Up All Night oh with Ron the Sheer. Oh, no. Oh, Guys, oh, I learned. Hey, Chrisley knows best. Sword. Sword. I learned, Sword. I learned that Doink the Clown is wrestling in Pittsburgh and he's a future Hall of Famer. Oh, wait, or wait. is he dead? I'm not sure anymore. He he actually is dead. Was he zombie doink the clown? I think I saw zombie doink the clown, and he was on in a match right before the major championship of the world was defended. Father and what, son. Was, uh, was, was Dink in the midget match? No, there was no Dink. There was no Dink. Oh. Want to know uh, about Sorg's experience in this situation? Check out the Indie Mayhem show this week. That'll be very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, also on the Indie Mayhem show, RJ City, the Super Indie Champion with IWC, who's uh, uh, wrestling this weekend. Oh, Matt Cross at Cage Fury. But uh, stick Sorg around if you're online uh, live or check out the Indie Mayhem show at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Mike? We have lessons from the chat room. Oh, from the chat room. What's up? Tony Garza learned that Stephanie McMahon knows more moves than Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. That's probably true. And uh, not related to Supercard. And Matt Carlin's learned that Eve Marie is damn near unbeatable on Supercard. Jeez. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is true. Which is true. Guys, let us know what you learned on the Twitters at Mayhem Show or on the Facebook uh, or Google Plus or Facebook group Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, Check us out at WrestlingMamShow.com and uh, check out the show. Subscribe to us. Make sure if you stumbled on us over on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, or Spreaker. 
of course. Um, also, uh, please join us here live, live.sorgatronmedia.com at about 9 p.m. Eastern time on uh, live.sorgatronmedia.com uh, or wrestlingmayhemshow.com. We got the link over there as well. Uh, big thanks, of course, to Basic Sickness for the intro and outro, basicsickness.com. Uh, drop us a line to goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com. <laughs> 412-206-WMS0. And big thanks to Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR uh, helping with the notes and the tweets all night long on the Sorgatron Media Network. With that, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out.